There are a few basic questions you can ask yourself about whether or not a certain station went well, and that includes what went well in this station. Areas of improvement, which is kind of like the tougher uh, aspect of things, but different things to consider for that would be whether you answered the question that was being asked, um, whether your answer was delivered in a structured manner where it was easier for the interviewer to follow, or um, if your answer was memorable, like what made your answer kind of stand out amongst all the other applicants. So those are different things you can consider um, in terms of areas of improvement. And uh, when you kind of figure out what your strengths are, you can kind of use that to your benefit as well. Not only is it a balance of being able to come up with good arguments as well as have a strong answer, but it's also in how you deliver it as well. So there's lots of nonverbal communication and body language that goes into it. Um, you want to ensure that you have a good tone, good open language, good eye contact, but also that you appear calm and confident as well. Yeah, and I think it's like a, a holistic look at the applicants because they already know what you look like on paper, but now they're actually meeting the person and the questions they're trying to ask is, especially considering the PA is a growing uh, profession in Canada, is this person going to advocate for the profession? Um, is this applicant uh, competent enough to practice as a healthcare professional? If I was a patient, would I be comfortable disclosing personal information to this patient? So these are different things that they would um, consider and you want to make sure you present yourself genuinely um, as that kind of uh, person so that you'll be successful um, through the PA program and then practicing as a PA as well. And I think a good perspective to take is to think about um, what's in the mind of admissions when they're going through and reviewing all these applicants. For instance, is this a student that I would want to teach? Would this be a colleague that I would want to work with and see every single day? Would I trust this um, PA with taking care of my parents or a loved one? So it's all about the person, the personality, compassion, empathy. When we think about all of the times that we've had good experiences with healthcare providers that we felt empowered as patients, mm -hmm. I think we're sort of looking for that in the students that we're trying to recruit. Because you want to recruit students that, that will be strong representatives of the profession, as you had mentioned. And we're facing certain challenges in Canada because uh, the PA profession is so new. We're trying to trailblaze and pioneer the profession in areas where PAs necessarily haven't practiced, whether that's a geographic area or a certain specialty. Essentially, we're looking for people who are going to help grow the profession within Canada, but also advocate for patients because you want these people to actually contribute to healthcare and like improving healthcare within Canada. So whether um, they're knowledgeable about what a PA can potentially do um, or the, what the growth of the PA profession could potentially do, whether it comes to wait times in the ER or wait times to see a specialist, um, that kind of knowledge goes a long way because you're advocating for the profession, but you're also advocating for patients. Um, and as a healthcare provider, patients kind of come first. So um, those are different things or different parts of your character that you can kind of uh, exhibit uh, throughout the interview process. Exactly. And I mean, we, we say that, but in theory, that might be a little bit hard to apply. So the best you can do to prepare for that is to do a lot of background research about the PA profession, look at the school that you're applying to, what are their mission, values, philosophies. Um, you also want to see if you can shadow, speak to, or read about uh, PAs in Canada and see um, what the characteristics are of those that actually got in and are out there and practicing and making a difference in the lives of patients as well as having an impact on the PA profession. So there's a lot we can learn about um, from, from those that are actually doing and practicing and you can kind of get a sense of, you know, there's a certain pattern of leadership or a certain pattern of communication that we see in people that are out there and practicing and have been successful in PA admissions. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard, I mean, it's not good to compare to the point where it's debilitating and it makes you feel discouraged. But if you, for instance, um, I have a lot of examples of mentors and people in my life that I would love to aspire to be a lot more like because they're just they're just killing it out there, professionally, personally. Um, so it's not a matter of copying what other people do, but just being inspired by what they did in their journey and perhaps personalizing it to your own. So that's a very long-winded way of saying, you know, learn as much as you can, reflect on how it impacts you and how it can make you a more interesting candidate for PA admissions. Mm -hmm. And I think going off of that, kind of the more and more you research about the profession, if you are genuinely passionate about it and if you are genuinely um, a candidate who's competent and like passionate about the profession as well as going through PA school, it will kind of show um, just the way you kind of deliver your answer. And um, personally, I found like the more I found, the more I researched about the profession, the more I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my gosh, cool, lateral mobility cool, like I can actually um, spend time with patients and talk about like preventative health and different things like that. And coming from a kin background, that was something that meant a lot for me. 
And uh, I made sure that um, I highlighted that aspect of my application um, when I went through the whole application process in general. So find what's unique for you and find what makes um, you like a memorable candidate and kind of apply that uh, throughout the application process. So it was... You don't necessarily have to, um, in that gap year, add a job where you have direct patient care experience. I mean, that's that's good, but even in a position where you're tutoring or mentoring, where you're providing instruction and constantly communicating with others, even customer service, whatever capacity that may be, um, can really help uh, improve your communication flow, your confidence. It helps with your maturity and professionalism as well. So these are um, different ways that you can try to improve. Another tip I would have is actually going through the CanMeds framework and like line by line sort of um, decide if this is an area of strength or an area of weakness for you and try to decide whether you know you should be adding more experiences, working on your written or verbal communication skills to improve that aspect uh, on admissions. Mm -hmm. And some of these improvements actually take some time. So you're not going to be like, oh, I started, like, it, it happens over time, so you won't even notice that change yourself, and you'd actually notice people around you who say, oh, I've noticed, like, you've become, a, like, a better communicator, or you've, um, um, even, like, explaining things to people as a tutor or something like that, like, you're able to kind of deliver different types of information in a better manner, which kind of goes a long way and helps you out during your interview as well. So if you do face a rejection, um, make sure that you use your time in between application cycles to better yourself, and sometimes um, you're not going to see that improvement right away and sometimes you don't see it because it's you who's actually improving so even getting feedback from uh, peers and family members around you to see um, it it kind of it motivates you in a sense yeah and I just wanted to add that um, you can read all the books and read all the articles about how to improve your MMI performance or how to structure your answer etc but I think the best way to do it is actually just to improve your communication skills in general and that you can't really get through just reading a book. Um, You can gain all the knowledge in the world but it doesn't mean anything unless you can apply it and that applies to anything. Okay, so that was the general overview of reflecting on the application process into PA school in Canada. If you are interested in more resources about reflecting on kind of your application process, we do offer that. So um, I've started a new platform for Canadian PA called getintopaschool.ca. It's a brand new website and essentially it's a pre-PA blog that has tips and articles dedicated just to PA admissions. So whether you're preparing or trying to meet requirements, you're doing your supplementary application or you're working on your PA interviews, there's lots of tips there and it's only on Canadian PA admissions. So definitely check out that resource. So for this video, uh, we've put together a PDF workbook on what questions to ask yourself to self-reflect on your performance on the MMI or just on the admissions pro- uh, process in general. This workbook will help you identify uh, areas for improvement and give you some ideas on what you can do between now and your next admission cycle to improve your application. So you, you, you can sign up for our Get Into PA School email list, which will send you pre-PA tips, workbooks, and other resources to help you on your journey to becoming a PA. Thank you so much for watching this video. Of course, like and subscribe. And don't forget to let us know in the comments what you thought and what you think we should talk about next time. Until next time.